In this tutorial, we're going to talk about creating an origami effect. This is uh, something that we've been seeing a lot in, in, in corporate design and design in general. Uh, it's a really, really simple technique, but adds a lot of dimension to ordinary geometric uh, based objects. So as you can see here, we've created a quick sample uh, of, of what this uh, effect is intended to create and its purpose. Now, uh, once again, if I zoom in here, you'll see how we've used uh, really just shadows to create uh, sort of an origami effect. It looks like uh, paper folds. So we're going to replicate that now on the right hand side where I have the same design without any of the uh, shadows and effects. Now you'll notice as we zoom out here, and I'm going to go to the wireframe view, notice these are just geometric shapes. So these are simply a composition of triangles and, and just various shapes. So go back to the enhance mode here. Uh, but once, uh, once we create an, uh, some shadows in here, it's going to give this a lot more dimension because right now it looks really flat. So let's talk about the drop shadow tool because that's the tool that we're going to use to create these varying uh, depths of shadow. So where my mouse is now hovering on the toolbar from the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and activate the, uh, the drop shadow tool. Now by default, the menu you're going to look for is the blend tool. And of course if I click on any of these black nibs, it's going to give me some extra options. So we'll go ahead and activate the drop shadow tool and notice how my pick tool has been replaced with a little icon uh, to indicate drop shadow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on an object, I'm going to left mouse click and I'm going to drag. And notice how that gives me a shadow and you can kind of see a preview of that shadow. You can see where it would be positioned. So this is your opportunity to kind of preview the placement and you can really dial in where this is going to be positioned and at the point that you're satisfied just go ahead and let go. So you'll see the preview of that particular shadow and that's a little more broad and broadcasting than, than I would like. So I can use some of the tools here at the very top of the toolbar to really command and make changes. So two that are uh, oftentimes really important is the drop shadow opacity. So we can adjust the transparency of the drop shadow. We can either make it way more uh, vibrant or we can uh, reduce the transparency so it's faint. Likewise, using the uh, uh, shadow feathering, we can either sharpen or soften that drop shadow. So we can really make it telescope into space or we can really, really refine it to give a little more dimension. Now let's give some examples of that. I'm at, let's make an adjustment to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the first option here, which is the drop shadow opacity. So notice as I increased that opacity, notice how the drop shadow is a little more refined and, and there's a little more definition there. Likewise, if I go and adjust the feathering, if we increase this number, notice how it sort of softens and telescopes and broadcasts that particular shadow. Now in contrast, if I were to reduce this to say 5, we're really going to sharpen and refine that particular shadow. In this case, um, that looks good. I may just want to soften the uh, drop shadow opacity, and reduce this maybe to 60, and you can see how that dropped and, and made a little more faint, a little more um, subtle. Now one thing I want to point out since we're in this workspace, if you notice uh, where my mouse is hovering, you have the ability to either clear the drop shadow, so if you come back to your project and maybe you want to correct something and, and you want to you know, clear the drop shadow to begin with, that's how you would delete the drop shadow from that specific object. So if I click that, notice how it just automatically removes my drop shadow. I'll hit Control Z to go back in time. And um, the other thing I want to point out is you have the opportunity to copy a shadow property. So if you really dialed in the right look and effect and you want to duplicate that on other objects, you'd have the opportunity to come back and click on the object and then go ahead and select Copy Shadow Properties. And that will let you place or really duplicate that shadow onto other objects. I prefer not to do that simply because I like to create a little dimension. If everything has the same exact shadow, um, that's really not natural. Um, so tend to think of this if you were looking at it, how would light uh, impact and really affect this? So that said, um, I may create some other simple shadows on here, give uh, some shadowing to this bottommost object here. And once again, see how it's broadcasting on all portions of our design. We can control that with this little midpoint here, and I can really skew and position how this is going to look and the impact it's going to have. I may completely and radically go and adjust the shadow so it telescopes and broadcasts to one specific part of the design. I'm going to go back and adjust the feathering on that specific object. Of course we can control and uh, manipulate the opacity to give that some different um, characteristics and you can see how that is a little faint so I'm going to go and drag that back in. So see these are just really really simple touches that are going to create this contrast and this level of, um, of effect in the design. I'm going to create one more on this topmost object here. Let's go back and select this guy. And uh, oops, that's the wrong object. So I'll hit Control Z to go back in time. 
and we will select the appropriate object and then create whatever uh, you know drop shadow is appropriate. So there's really no one right way or wrong way to do this. It's just a matter of dialing it in and experiencing it until you're satisfied with it. In fact, I may go place one more here to give this back most object a little bit of dimension here. So let's go and drop one there and reduce the opacity on that to say 20. And let's um, sharpen the uh, feather on there. I think five would actually work well. So perfect. Now the one thing I'd advise doing is looking at this on a background, whatever background would be appropriate. So here's a quick trip for creating a quick tip for creating a background. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and select the uh, design here that we have on the right hand side. Now that that's selected, I'm going to hold down my control key and my shift key. I'm going to double click my rectangle tool. Notice how that draws a box around my graphic that we have on our workspace. Well now I'm going to go ahead and select a color and I'm going to go hold down my shift key and hit page down and that's going to shift that box to the background. Now once you place something on a uh, background you'll just really see a lot more clarity uh, and see how those shadows will be impacted especially on the substrate color. So I encourage you to uh, present this effect and this style to your clients because once again it's modern, it's relevant, it's something that we see more and more examples of and it's really easy to create.